Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There I am. Hello. 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 How's everyone doing? Good? Come on. It's a beautiful day outside. Amen. We're at church. Come on. It's going to be awesome. Oh. Man, some people are sleeping in, and all they're going to do today is watch Disney. And here we are at church. It's going to be awesome. Let's stand together. We're just so looking forward to having... I'm in a good mood this morning because I got the three, my three favorite women in the whole world in church. Amen. Three of them. I got my mom, and I got my mom in love. And I got Mika, all right here. Can you believe this? Amazing. It's, it's, like a, it's like an early Mother's Day present. Happy Mums Day to my favorite mums right here. Hallelujah. Father, thanks for a great uh, chance to be together. We're so blessed. We get to come together and worship you and lift up your name. Lord, we just invite your presence, your Holy Spirit to come and to meet with us. Lord, we, we're looking forward to hearing your word. And, and Lord, we pray for the kids. Is there, they're going to have a great time downstairs that you just bless every part of the service today. We love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ed and the worship. You're not Ed, you're Rob. Rob and the worship team are coming to bless us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, our God is worthy of every praise. So let's just do that. It's a fun song just to shake off anything that's sort of in the way where you can set your affection on things above and just sing his high praises. Every praise is a true our God. Every word of worship and one accord. God is not just a lot of talk, but it's living by the power of God. He is the Lord, and He reigns on high. He is the Lord, spoke into the darkness, created the light. He is the Lord, who is like unto Him never.
verse again. Oh, your gospel, oh Lord, is the hope for our nation. You, you are the Lord. It's the power of God for our salvation. You, you are the Lord. We ask not for riches, but look to the cross. Is need yes we need your power in our lives God uh, would you just show us that today in whatever circumstance we're going through whatever challenges are coming our way whatever like goals that are like dreams we have that you are a part of God that you would help see them happen today God uh, or the next little while or just be with us help us today Jesus show us that power that that even just as we just celebrated Easter the power the same power that rose Jesus from the grave would be living in us uh, and bringing new life to our bodies, to our spirits, to everything, God, that we are. And so, Lord, help us to see that power in our lives as we seek after you and look to you and, and just invite you in each and every day. Father, we just want to pray today uh, for a couple uh, here in our church, Chris and Megan. They've been with us for a short time, but uh, they've uh, found some new, a new uh, job up in Newberry. And so, Lord, we just pray that you bless them as they move on. Uh, would you just make it just be a favorable new spot for them? It's a really great uh, continuation of the career. And Lord, we just ask that you'll uh, be with them and bless them today, Lord Jesus. Father, we just want to pray right now for uh, George and Barb Garrett. Uh, we pray that you just be with them. Would you strengthen them? Would you heal their bodies? Uh, God, just be with them, Lord. And we also want to pray for anyone dealing with COVID today, that God, they would quickly get through it, God, that nothing would linger, that there would just be no more, no, no long-term effects, Jesus, but they would be through it and well and healthy again, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for your strength in, in seeing that happen. Father, we want to pray today for Barb Prouse. Uh, we just learned that her brother has passed away. Uh, her brother Alan, and Lord, we just pray that you would just give her strength, give the, their whole family strength today, God, your comfort and your peace. Uh, just be with them, God, as they're just they're in need of you today as, they, as they're going to miss Alan. Father, we just know uh, that just such a hard thing to do, God, so just, just give them that comfort that they need, Jesus, a hard thing to go through. Father, we pray for uh, Julianne and William uh, as their, their son uh, Robert was born uh, quite a bit, quite early. And so, Lord, as he's going to need uh, a lot of help over these next weeks, God, would you just be uh, with the doctors, be with the, the staff helping young Robert? Uh, and, Lord, would you just give your strength and your power and just, just full-on strength to this little baby, God, you, uh, and that, God, you would just look after that whole little family. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, as we continue to look uh, to you today for each and every part of this service, would you just, just be with us, God? May your presence fill this place and we know your strength and your power in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, you may be seated. <laughs> Um, I just want to let you know, uh, so we have our uh, youth and junior youth going to convention this year, and that is happening on May the 20th and 21st, and we haven't been able to do this for two years, so I'm really excited to be able to take a group again this year. And so to do that, though, uh, to make it affordable for all the different uh, youth in our, in our church and, and of those who come from the community, we do a fundraiser every year, and so that is going to be next Sunday. It is a spaghetti dinner fundraiser. So. Woo! I know one person who will be there and excited, yes. this guy. Um, and so <laughs> it's next Sunday and be right after the service. And so you can stay after the service uh, and have that meal. Uh, and we do ask that you would just give uh, a small donation as you come. Um, but uh, or do, well, you can give whatever you want. Give as much as you want to bless the youth with. Uh, we currently have 17 youth signed up and we're hoping for a few more. Uh, that's between junior youth and senior. Uh, so we're hoping for a few more to come along with us as well. Um, and so it's going to be a good meal. 
right? We do spaghetti, garlic bread, some sort of bread, uh, salad, Caesar salad, it's gonna be good, probably ice cream at the end, so like, it's gonna be a meal. So come on out, the youth will be serving it and uh, helping look after you all, so you have a, 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 uh, they're almost gonna be like your maitre d's, is that what it's called? Anyway, they'll look after you. Uh, and your waiters, there we go, say waiter and waitresses. And so it's gonna be great, so come on out next week, if you weren't planning on coming to church next week, come anyway and get a good meal, all right? Uh, and so that's it, and we'll get Pastor Paul back up here. So yes, come on out for that dinner and support our youth as they head to convention. Come on, who wants oh. some spaghetti next and, Sunday? And one of the reasons why... Woo! Come on! I do. One of the reasons why convention is so good for our youth... Hello. Why is it? <laughs> uh, is that it's just a time to really take all the spiritual times that they could have, uh, like... Uh, so, and just kind of compacted in somewhere where just the sense and the feeling and the excitement of it just helps really change the hearts and minds as they get really good speakers, really good time of worship, and just are able to have that focus as well as doing it with hundreds of other youth their age. Yes. Just like, wait a minute, it's not just us. That's it. It's not just the 15 people in our group. It's hundreds and thousands across the world. It's just yes. an extra, Amen. it's an extra boost in the sense at those times. And just, yeah. you hear tons of people over the years get just touched and changed at these times. So that's, Amen. that's why it's important Come on. to give. So. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. I am so excited about coming to church. I may have our, I'm going to have our time preaching next Sunday, Pastor. I'm going to be thinking about that spaghetti dinner the whole time I'm preaching. I better make sure my notes are really clear next week so I can focus on my notes knowing that and that smell is going to be wafting up the stairs, isn't it? You're going to have those fans pointed downstairs so the smell so if there's people here that actually are thinking they're just going to go somewhere else they're they're going to once they smell that they're going to want to stay right okay how many of you come on how many are going to join me next week for the spaghetti dinner come on come on oh it's going to be awesome awesome it's good to be in church today isn't it you didn't know what you were going to get today did you here we are okay any other announcements yes coffee hour how many missed coffee hour last two weeks Jack, did you miss it? Okay, we're on this Wednesday, okay, buddy? We're on this Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. Somebody asked me if I got demoted this morning because I was, uh, I was doing attendance, but I told them, because that's normally Ruth's job, but I told them that my boys tell me on a regular basis that Ruth basically runs the church. So I actually got a, I actually got a promotion, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but we're going to do coffee hour this Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. Also, Thursday morning, we have School of the Spirit. We started last Thursday back, and actually last week and this week, we're talking about deliverance. And so uh, we're in Acts chapter 19, talking about the crazy story in Acts 19, the, the sons of Sceva. And so I did tape last Sunday because we did some teaching on that. And that's not something we talk a lot about, but it's reality, it's real. And, and uh, so, um, so if you wanted to come and join us, you've never been before. We had a, Gary came this week for the first time, and you'd be welcome. That's from 1030 to noon on Thursdays. Birthdays and anniversaries. Anybody this morning with a birthday or anniversary in the house? Anyone? You have a birthday this week. It's this week already? That was a quick year. Like this Saturday. Okay, so, so we're going to have to sing nice and loud to, to, to Pastor Drew this morning. We'll get him. We'll get you again next week because it's only one day from Sunday. But, but we are going to win. And what is it? Is it, is it 63 or 14? 63, okay. So we're going to backwards, right? Is it 36 this year? 37. Wow, you're getting old, eh? 37, Pastor Drew. Won't be long, you'll be as old as me, man. All right, so we're going to sing uh, nice and loud to Pastor Drew. Wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday to Pastor Drew. Right? Come on, you ready, buddy? Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Happy birthday, Pastor Drew. Happy birthday. Okay, I heard there's some amazing teachers 
that are teaching the kids uh, downstairs this morning. One of them was in this Wednesday to get her material so she can make some cool crafts. So it's going to be wild down there. I can't wait. Elizabeth was in early this week just getting ready. And so kids, it's time to go downstairs. Have fun, okay? Hey, make sure you sing nice and loud this morning if you do any songs, okay? We want to hear you upstairs, okay? All righty. Why don't we stand together and uh, Rob's going to come and, and lead, continue to lead us in worship. Mm-hmm. just want the Holy Spirit to come fill this room. Father of creation Unfold your sovereign plan Raise up the chosen generation that will march to the land. All of creation is longing for your unveiling of power. Would you release your
our prayers rise like incense to God, which He keeps in a bowl. Our prayers have substance, and He hears them. Day and night, night and day. Tell him this morning he's worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy of it all, Jesus. You're worthy of it all, Lord. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all, Lord. You conquered sin. You conquered the grave. And you're worthy of our praise today, Jesus. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. We thank you that we can join with the elders around the throne and the angels. And the Bible says the multitudes and multitudes thousands and thousands of angels lifting up the name of God today, Lord. And we are, are joining them today with praise, Lord. We thank you that you are worthy of our praise today, Lord. We thank you that you're here. We thank you that you know every one of us, that you know the numbers of hairs on our head, and you care about the things that are going on in our lives. You're a personal God. You're a God who left the glory of heaven, and you walk this earth, and you are tempted in every way as we are yet without sin. And you walk to your cross to Golgotha, and you died on a cross, and you shed your blood for us. You are so worthy and we thank you lord that not only did you send your son but you gave us your word and your word is your your epistle it's your love letter to us we thank you lord that we can open your word today and we know you've got something for us lord would you speak to us today lord help me to hide behind the cross it's not my words lord let them be your words today jesus bless your word today Encourage us, Lord, that there be some nugget of truth that we can grab a hold of and take home today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, some of you heard the... Uh, a prayer requests earlier today. Uh, thanks, Pastor Drew, for praying. Uh, some of you have met Julianne and William. They sit kind of over this way, younger couple, and uh, they had a baby this week, and the baby is only 27 weeks old. And so his little name is Robert, and uh, we just we just want to be praying for them. They're they're in Ottawa right now, and we just want to be praying for that little baby that God will help. And uh, we just, just if you could think of the baby Robert this week, just be praying for, for, for and for Julianne and for, for William. 
that God would just help them. Amen? How many know God is able? Come on, God is able. Hallelujah. We're thankful, amen, for the doctors, the physicians, but we're also thankful for the master physician, amen? Jesus is the healer, and let's just continue to pray that that baby every single day, every hour of every day will get stronger and stronger. If you have your Bibles with you today, your phones or whatever you use, we're going to read from uh, Psalm, Psalm chapter 1. We're starting a new series uh, today in the Psalm. How many enjoyed that worship this morning? Wasn't that great? Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us. We appreciate you. Thank you for being used this morning by the Lord. Psalm chapter 1. We're just going to read this psalm. It's only six verses, and then we're going we're gonna to dive right in. How blessed is the man or woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of of scoffers, but his delight, but his or her delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, God's law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, or she does, she prospers. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the sorry the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous for the lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked will perish May God add his blessing to the, uh, to the reading of his, uh, of his word this morning. In a very unstable world, I find there are very few things that you can hold on to. Even the institutions of the past that brought some stability... School, family, work, the government, in many ways have failed us in their stability. As Christians, we can be different from the world. We can find a firm foundation. I have a question for you today. What will you choose? Will you choose to be blessed? Or will you choose to be cursed? Yikes. I think, how many of you think that's a pretty easy? <laughs> Let's see, cursed? Hey. Nah. Blessed or cursed? These are our two choices today in Psalm chapter 1. Blessed or blessed. That sounds kind of, you know, the old uh, King James blessed. As you notice, there's like, when you say the word blessed, it's only one syllable, right? But some people have two. Blessed, right? <laughs> blessed or literally all oh, the blessedness or all oh, the many blessings. That's literally what this word means. Blessed is the man or woman who does not, here it is, who does not. Three things. Walk, walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. I love, I love the, I love whoever, whatever words they chose to, to pick, they could have picked, you know, how many of you know that sometimes when you translate a word, you can translate two or three different words. I love, I love the, 
the, uh, the choices for, for these words here. First of all, to walk, a casual movement along the way, going through the motions of sin, flirting with the world. That's the kind of walk in the counsel of the wicked. It's a starting point. Just walking, casually walking with sin. Secondly, to stand, taking one stand, making it a part of your life. You've gone beyond a casual temptation or flirtation with the world. You're kind of standing in it now. You've chose to have sin in your life. And thirdly, to sit in the seat of of scoffers, literally a permanent sitting down, an abiding, liking to stay, from flirting with the world to a habitual sin with the world. It's become a part of your life. You are sitting in it. It's a part of who you are. To walk, to stand, to sit. It's talking about a progression here. A progression. I like uh, I like uh, Kylan Dillich is a is a commentary that I refer to quite a bit. It's a little tricky to read because unfortunately I took Greek when I was in Bible college. I did not take Hebrew. I know how to use helps to understand Hebrew, but in this particular commentary, when you read it, it's like got the words in the actual Hebrew writing, and I can't read Hebrew like I can read Greek. But, it, th- but this is what uh, Kyle and Dillich paraphrase says. Blessed is he or she who does not walk in the state of mind which the ungodly cherish, much less that he should associate with a vicious life of sinners or even delight in the company of those who scoff at religion. There are many examples in Scripture of men and women that fell into this, that fell into this idea of of, uh, seeing something and then choosing, you know, it started again, like I said at the beginning there, flirting with sin to the point where it just became a part of our life. Probably one of the best examples of this in the Old Testament is Lot. How many of you remember Lot? Who was Lot? He was Abraham's nephew, okay? That's found in Genesis chapter 13. I want to just read a few verses from Lot. Listen, listen to how it starts and listen to the ending. Genesis 13, 10 to 13, if you're taking notes. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the valley of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you go to Zoar. Verse 11, so Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan. We have an Abram right there, way back there. Just turned one this week. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly. Wicked, wow, wicked exceedingly, that's one phrase. They were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. Lot had his eyes on the green, luscious valley. All he saw was this incredible spot where he could graze his animals, get them nice and fat so he could sell them and make lots of money. That's what Lot saw. He saw the the lusciousness of, of it, but in the midst of it, in the midst of all of it, it says in the scripture here in verse 13 that all the people that lived there were wicked. It was wickedness there. And, and, and somehow he missed that. It was like, it was kind of like, do you remember the story with Adam and Eve? Now, how many of you know that, that Eve, how many know that Eve gets blamed? 
Come on, where's, where's the ladies in the house today? Come on, ladies. How many know Eve gets blamed? Do you know that in the scripture it says, like, when it says, you know, when uh, Eve was tempted and it says that, you know, it, it says that Adam was with her. Okay, so that's right. Come on, do I get an amen there? I get an amen there, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you for that amen. Yeah, so guess what? Yeah, yeah, it was. Anyways, uh, where, where was I going with that? I can't remember. Anyways, okay, so... Uh, so the first one is flirting with evil, Lot choosing to do this. The second one is the refusal to do evil in the midst of evil. Do you remember the story of Joseph? How many remember st- Joseph? Come on, how, m- how many are, were raised in the church pretty well? How many, it's, it's new to you. It's new, some of this stuff's new to you. Okay, so Nick, okay, so, so Genesis 39. I want you to read that chapter, Nick. Okay, I'm not going to read it all this morning. But basically, Joseph um, was, was in charge of a lot of Potiphar's, a lot of Egypt. He was kind of like second or third in command. I, actually, he was, technically, he was third because there was, there was Joseph and then Potiphar, and then Potiphar answered to Pharaoh. So technically, he was third in command. But quickly, Joseph became successful and he lived in the house of his master, whose name was Potiphar. And it says here, we'll start at verse 6. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife, so Potiphar's wife, looked with desire and Joseph and said, whoa, he's a babe. No, actually, he said, L-. she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in this house, and he's put all these things in my charge. There is no one greater in this house Than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? Joseph just laid it out. No, I can't do that because you are not a property. You are the wife of Potiphar, and he you are his wife, and I will refuse to do evil. As She spoke to Joseph day after day. Isn't that the way sin is? Isn't that the way temptation is? Uh, It's day after day. It comes at us, we we do good one day, we fight it, and then the next day, it's back at our door, knocking on our door. As she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the household was there inside. She caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled outside. What happened after that? She lied. She went to Potiphar and said, hey, look at this. I got his garment. He tried to, he tried to rape me. He tried to, you know, have relations with me. All right. But Joseph did not submit. He did not, he did not walk, and he did not stand, and he did not sit, amen, with sin. Verse 2, back to, back to Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. His delight is in the law of the Lord, not under it, not subject not, sorry, not subject to it, but in it. It says, he meditated on it day and night. Now, the word here for meditation is very interesting. The Hebrew word for meditation, to meditate on the word of the Lord, to meditate. When, it's, when you read in the Old Testament the law of the Lord, how many of you understand what that means is that was what they had for a Bible? Do you understand that? Basically, it was the first five books of the Bible would have been the main the main portion that they would have had. It says that they, literally the word meditate there means like a moaning or a speaking practice or a repeating of the war, word. It was more than just reading it. It was getting into it. It was reading over the verses over and over again and getting it from the page to the brain to the heart. Amen? To, to just really, really uh, get into the word. I want to ask you a question today. Have you read a good book lately? 
Have you read a good book lately? Have there been books that have helped you? When was the last time you plugged in, tuned in, got lost in God's book, the Bible? Not a casual glance, not a ritual, devotional, or habitual meal closer, but a deep look, a meditation into the Word of God. Listen to what Psalm 19 says for all the young men and the young women here today. How can a young man or young woman keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 109, verse 105. Man, I just wish I had a little direction. I just wish I knew which way to go. Oh, it's good that you should ask that question. It's good that you should think of that because Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Pastor, I don't know which way to go. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, I got a question for you this morning. I see, I see the Bagoras are in the house today. I got a question for you this morning. How many of you ever been camping? You know, you're at the cottage, or you're worse, worse than that, you're, you're doing that real camp. You know, the stuff where you, you lay down at night, you're in a tent, and you, 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 you thought it was a pillow, but it's actually a tree root? How many have been camping, okay, and it's, it's, it's pitch black, you know, maybe you're out at Murphy's Point, and I've been there with the boys, and it's pitch black, and all of a sudden, nature calls, doo doo do. it's time to go pee. <laughs> and you are, everyone else is sleeping in the tent, and you're, you're you know, you, you, how many of you find that when you're laying this way, you know, and you're in a small tent and you're sort of laying horizontal, that it takes a little while to sort of get your bearing in the middle of the night when it's pitch black. And you're looking around, where did the kids put the flashlight? And you can't find it. And so you get out of the tent and you go left. Because you, you, how many of you go left always when you get out of the tent, right? You know, just makes sense, right? You get out of the tent and you go left and you go... And you trip over. Do you remember those strings that you pull out on the tent? Come on. How many of you have done that? Come on. Let, look at this. Look, look, look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because you didn't have a flashlight. How many of you know it's a lot easier if you have a flashlight? Yes. Well, the Word of God, it's like that in life. Amen? This world can be a dark place, but God is the light. Of, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen? And his word, the Bible says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What are the consequences of living your life delighting in the word of God, in the law of the Lord? Verse 3, here it is, verse 3. Like a tree, like a tree. I think about a nice big old tree. Has anybody here ever seen one of those great big, uh, what do they call those things? A weeping willow. Anybody ever seen a weeping willow? Giant, they're huge, eh? You can't hug each other around it. They're so big, right? And it's down by the river, right? And it's just big honking tree, okay? Think about that tree. I'm not talking about one of these trees. You know, you know when they make a new uh, subdivision? Yes, we're going to plant a tree on your front lawn. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about? There's like, it's a maple tree, you think? but there's only one leaf on it, so you're not really sure. And they plant it in the fall, and by winter, there's no leaves on it, and you're not really sure what's going to happen. I'm talking about this huge honking tree, amen? Big tree. Like a tree. Here it is, here it is. Verse 3. Planted by the waters. Planted. There's stability. It's fortified. It's rooted. It's solid. It's chosen. It's not wild. It's cultivated. It's properly secure. It's planted. 
Secondly, by the rivers. By the rivers. Not just one river that could dry up, but rivers. Think of rivers. Pardon washing, grace, abundance, blessing. Think of rivers. It's a tree. It's planted. It's by the rivers. Thirdly, it's productive. It's fruitful. There's growth. There's blessing. Listen to what it says here. Which yields its fruit in season. How many want to see some fruit? Just three of you. Okay, thank you for your honesty this morning. All right. Fruitful. Productive. Growth. Blessing. Fourthly, unwithered. Unwithered. And its leaf does not wither, unwithered. Even during the dry winter seasons of life, it is not unwithered. This speaks of faith. How many of you feel like we've just come through a dry season? Three of you, okay. The rest of you, okay. How many think we've, we've come through a pretty dry season, a withered season? Feels like we've been in winter for two and a half years. You're all still here. It's amazing. Thanks for coming to church today. No, I'm serious. I really like preaching to you guys. You're awesome. You know, we, you know, like Mika has to come because she's just supporting me, you know, like she just loves me, right? So, but you know, it's nice that all of you came too and both my moms. <laughs> Planted by the rivers, fruitful, unwithered, and fifthly, prosperous. Whatever he does, he prospers. This promise is not flippant. It's the word of God. It's the word of faith. When your delight is in the Lord, you will find prosperity. Amen? Amen, Kirby? You'll find prosperity. When you put God first, when you delight in his word, what, the Bible says whatever you do will, will prosper. Oh, pastor, that's, that's that prosperity gospel. No, it's not. It's right here in the Bible. Amen? If you're serving the Lord, if you're following the Lord, if you're opening up His Word, if you're meditating on it day and night, God will, it's a promise, it's right there. He'll bring prosperity. You're planted by the rivers, you're fruitful, you're unwithered, and you're prosperous. Okay, that's the good news. How many like the good news? Okay, let's get to the bad news. Number, <laughs> verse four, cursed. Everybody say cursed. Don't be cursing in church. <laughs> Cursed. <laughs> here it is, here it is. The wicked are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Okay, this is really interesting. Every once in a while, when you have a little bit of background into the language that the Bible is written in, in this place in Psalms here, Hebrew, um, literally this verse says, not so the ungodly, not so. It actually uses that negative term, term not so, twice. The beginning of the verse and the end of the verse. Not so the ungodly, not so. It's like a double ne negative. The righteous are like a tree, but the wicked are like chaff. Now, we've talked about chaff before, and I, I'm glad to have my resident... Uh, Farmer, good, my good resident farmer friend, Brent Haggett, in the house today, uh, that if, if anybody needs a definition of chaff, please talk to Brent. He'll let you know what that means. Chaff. Here it is. Ready? Chaff. Completely worthless. Kind of like white bread, okay? Chaff. Completely worthless, right? Unserviceable. Without substance. Easily carried away. No foundation. The wind drives chaff away, right? There's a little bit of a breeze, and they're sorting the wheat. You know, the old sieve, they used to, the thing they used to use. They throw it up in the air. Where does it, where's the chaff go? It just blows away. So you can be like a tree, firmly planted, or you can be like chaff. It's your choice. Those are, those are the two choices we have today. Trees or chaff. Jesus reminds us of a man who built his life on the sand. Don't build your life on a sandy land. Don't build it too near the shore. Because it might look kind of nice, and you'll have to build it twice. Have to build your house once more. you got to build your house upon the rock. 
Make a good foundation in a solid spot because the storms may come and go, but the peace of God you will know. You remember that one? How many remember that one? Come on. Kids praise Sandy Land. Anyways, okay. All right. Jesus reminds us, listen to this, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man. Everybody say foolish. <laughs> a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and it was a great fall. Chaff. A little wind comes, it just blows away. There's no substance to it. That's what the wicked are like. Ecclesiastes 2, verses 10 and 11. All that my eyes desired, I do not refuse them. I do not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart was pleased because of all my labor, and this was my reward for all my labor. Thus I considered all my activities which my hands had done, and the labor which I had exerted, and behold, all was vanity and striving after the wind, for there was no profit under the sun. Chaff or a tree firmly planted, your choice. Now, I have a question for you, and this is not a deep question, but it is a question. I want you to think about this. It may be deep. Some of us may consider this a deep question. Everything that you work hard to get, where does it one day end up at? The dump. The dump, yes. One day, whatever you're working really hard to save for, how many of you have that car right now and you were saving? It took you like 10 years to save and you've got that car. It's now eight years old. One day your car will end up with the wreckers. How many of you know that? Amen. Okay. Jesus talked about the difference between our treasure, right? Our earthly treasure and our heavenly treasure. Amen. Storing up for ourselves treasure, right? Eternal things, things that are important to us versus things that are from the world. It's the difference between a tree firmly planted by the rivers and chaff. God knows the way of the wick, sorry, the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. What do you want to choose today? Do you want to choose life like a tree firmly planted with stability, with prosperity, you know, not withering with fruit? Or do you want to choose chaff? Listen to this paraphrase of what we have just read. Oh, the happiness many times over of the man or woman who does not temporary, sorry, temporarily or even casually imitate the plan of life or those living in the activity of sinful confusion, nor comes and takes his stand in the midst of those who miss the mark spiritually, nor settles down and dwells in the habitation of a blasphemous crowd, but in God's word he takes great pleasure, thinking upon it and pondering it and every time, every moment, waking day and night. The result, he will become tree-like, firm, fruitful, unwithered, fulfilling the goals in life that God has designed for him. Not so the ungodly. They are like worthless husks, beaten about and battered by the winds of life. Wow. Therefore, on account of their inner worthlessness without the Lord, the ungodly are not able to stand erect on judgment day nor do they possess any right to be numbered among the assembly 
of declared righteousness by God, because the Lord is inclined toward and bound to his righteous ones by special love and care, but the way of the one without the Lord will lead to eternal ruin. Wow. Blessing or cursing? It's our choice. Psalm 1, it's our choice. Which will we choose? Will we choose what God has for us, or will we choose what the world has for us? Will we choose to be a tree firmly planted, or will we choose to be like chaff? Without exception, without exception, and this is just me being straight up honest with you this morning. Here it is, right here. If you forgot everything else I say, Remember this, without exception, I have found that when my life is wavering, I can see it is because my devotional life is weak. When I'm having a bad week or a bad month or just a bad day, without exception, one of the things that I can see is that I haven't taken the time that I need to take, amen, in His Word and in his presence. As we close this morning, I just want to take about three minutes to just to talk about a few practical ideas when it comes to God's word, amen, meditating on it day and night and our devotional life. Number one, set a goal. Start small. I am not assuming this morning at all that even though we are in a Christian church, and even though maybe some of you have been you know, in church a long time, I am not assuming that everyone is regularly reading the Bible. That is not an assumption I'm making today. All right? Just because I know. I know how challenging it is sometimes. I want to say, set a goal. And start small. If you are not, if, if, if it's just not a part of your regular practice, to read the Bible regularly, like daily, okay? Set a goal. Start small. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a chapter a day. You know, maybe it's only, you know, half a chapter a day. Start in the New Testament. Start in Matthew. Just start right off the top. Some people say John. John's great. You got John 3.16 in there. But the first chapter, it's pretty challenging to read it. It's got a lot of philosophy in there. It's talking about in the beginning was the Word, was the Word was with God, the Word was God. Okay. Matthew is a little more like a story. So start in the Gospels. Start in the Gospels. Get a Bible you can understand. If you do not have a Bible you understand, I have one for you in my office. You can come right after church, and I will hand it to you. I have about 10 in there that I could give away. All right? And they're good ones. Like I... I do the tour. I get to the thrift shops, and sometimes people are giving away brand new Bibles, and they're good. All right? So if you need a Bible, talk to me about it. Get one you can understand. Don't rush through it. Don't read the Bible like you read any other book. Because how many know when you read a book of fiction, man, I can go through there, and I I read a fiction book in two weeks. How many of you are... Come on, where are my readers this morning, okay? The Bible, every page, every verse is profound, Okay, even though it is, I mean, it is a story, it's God's story to us, Uh, it really happened, but don't rush through it. Fourthly, pray and ask God to reveal himself to you through his word. Before you read it, say, God, I, amen, I need something this morning. Lord, I I am, I'm thirsty. Lord, I'm, I'm feeling weak today. Could you just speak to me through your word? Ask God, ask God. Fifthly, be accountable. Find a friend who will challenge you to get into the Word. If you don't have, if you have very few Christian friends, call me or Pastor Drew. Or talk to someone in our church that maybe you connect with. Maybe you're in a small group or you just know them really well. You've gone to coffee with them. Find somebody that you can talk to that's not afraid to get up in your face and ask you, Hey man, have you been reading the Word lately? Are you in the Word? Get involved in the Word as a family or a couple. If you're here and uh, you, you represent a, a, some kind of family unit, whether you're a, a couple or a bunch of people, we have a few families here where there are a bunch of people, you know what I'm saying, six or five or whatever. Okay, 
Take some time to open up the Word together as a family. Okay? Use a journal. Read until God speaks to you. How many have discovered that sometimes if you're, if you're doing one of those programs like through the Bible in a year, it's like, uh, okay, i got to do my 3.2 chapters. Here we go. Whew, that was good. I don't remember one thing I just read. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you can just read a verse, amen? Did any of you guys, when you're growing up, have one of those uh, little plastic bread things? You know, and they had the verse. How many had one of those? Come on. Yeah, look at that, look at that. And they had those little verses in it. Sometimes you pick a verse out of that and you just read it three or four times like, whoa. You know, it's amazing. You know, don't, don't think you have to read even to the end of the chapter. If you get a verse, what it's talking about here in Psalms, this whole idea of meditate on day and night, if you get a verse, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness all day. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, I just want to confess my sin. I want to confess those thoughts that I had this week, that anger that I showed to that person. Lord, I just want to confess it. I know it says in your word that I will be forgiven. I do not listen to the lies of the enemy. I will not feel guilty. I will not feel condemned. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Jesus, I'm not listening to those thoughts of the enemy because it says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. For we are more than conquerors. God, today I feel defeated. I feel defeated, Lord. But I know that we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Get the word of God in your heart. Amen? Get it in there. Maybe some of you, you need to just take some time in one of those little books in the New Testament. They're great, eh? Because some of them, are, like you get into Luke, that's long, you know. Wow, I was going to do one chapter a day, Pastor, and there's 77 verses in this Luke, for, you know. But you get into, you know, like 1 John, or you get into some of Paul's epistles, you know, and, and it's like it's only four chapters, so you're in Philippians, like, this is really good. This is so practical. I'm learning stuff, right? So you read a chapter a day in Philippians in one month. In one month, you read Philippians seven and a half times. And after a while, you've read it through, and then you read it through again, and then you read On the fourth time, all of a sudden, some of the verses, like, hey, I know this verse. It's already in my heart. And then the next time you're thinking of something, God reminds you, oh, yeah, I need to be more human. I need to be more humble. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality of God a thing to be grasped, but he humbled himself, taking on the appearance of man to be made in the image, right? You know, it's there. It's in your heart. God will help you. Set a goal. Get a Bible you can understand. Don't rush. Pray and ask God to show you. Be accountable. Get involved in the Word as your family. Use a journal. Read until God speaks to you. And don't be hard on yourself when you miss a day. Can you imagine that? That the devil, that's all he's got. You decide, that's it. After Paul's, Pastor Paul's sermon on Psalm chapter 1, I'm going to read the Word this week. And today you read the Word and Monday you read the Word, and Tuesday you read the Word, and Wednesday you forget. You know, it's busy, your kids are driving you crazy, you know, you had a bad day at work, and you're just, blah, blah, blah. and you forget. And then what does the devil do? He's like, ah, yeah, see, look at that. It only lasted three days. Just say, Lord, I'm going to do better tomorrow. Don't get, feel guilty when you miss a day. Just pick up the next day, amen? Let's not let the enemy lie to us and make us feel like garbage. Because how many know that the enemy at the end, there's this little verse in Revelation, it says that one angel throws him into the lake of fire, right? So he's done. Thanks for coming. All right? All right, I'm going to ask Rob to come back up. So, you got a choice. I want you to read this psalm this week. Psalm chapter 1. That's your homework. 
Psalm chapter 1. I want you to read it, and I want you to choose blessing or cursing. Blessing, to be blessed or to be cursed. And how many, how many, want, to, how many want to be blessed? Come on. Come on. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> Think about that tree. How many live out in the country? How many grew up in the country? Keep your hands up. How many grew up in the country? How many of you can think of a big old tree right now? You got one in your mind? Think of that big old tree. God just wants you to be a big old tree. How many of you met people in the kingdom and they're like a big old tree? How do you remember Gib Johnson? He's like a big old tree. Solid in the Lord, amen. How did he get that way? I'll tell you how he got that way. Right in here. In the Word, meditating on the Word, serving the Lord, living for the Lord. That's what I want to be like, amen? I want to be the big old tree. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your Word. I love your Word, God. Thank you for this psalm. Thank you, Lord, that we're on this little journey through the psalms. We're not, <laughs> we're not going to do 150. Everybody said amen. Lord, we just, but we just thank you for your word. Thank you that it's real, that it's, that it's alive, that it's active, that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, I just pray that you would help us. It's not just about Sunday morning getting to church, having a little service, having a little song, but it's all week. It's all week in your presence. It's all week opening up your word, and, and, and Lord, you're going to give us something that we can hold on to. It's not going to be like something that's just going to blow away. Father, I pray that you would start this. I, Lord, I pray right now for the young families in our church, for all the families in our church. But, Lord, I'm thinking of those families with, with young kids, Lord, that we would teach them at a young age to get into your word, to learn your word, We'd be able to talk to them about some of these incredible stories, these crazy stories in the Old and the New Testament. You know, we'd be able to tell, talk, share with them about the healings and that, hey, God can still do that stuff today. We could talk about the miracles. We could talk about your faithfulness, your provision. Lord, help us to be able to share that with our families and with our friends, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Rob and Sandra are going to lead us. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as to be
your heads bowed and your eyes closed this morning, I just want to ask a question. How many would say with me this morning, Pastor, I feel this week like I was harassed by the enemy. He was lying to me. He was, I was just feeling lousy. I was feeling defeated. I was feeling discouraged. I was feeling guilty. You're here today and you, you're just feeling that this week. Just put up your hand. Where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, God just told me that. So he wants you to know that you're not, that you're his child, and that he loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus for you. You are his son and his daughter. And what you have felt this week is a lie from the enemy. So, Lord, we thank you that we have not been given a spirit of, uh, of slavery, but we have been given a spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by which we can cry out, Abba, Father. Your spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So Lord, today I pray for my brothers and sisters in the Lord that they would know that you, that we are your kids and you love us. And Lord, we just come against those lies that the enemy would try to tell us that we're no good, that you know, we're just sinners, that we're just, we're, you know, we, we just can't do anything right. And Lord, we listen to your word that tells us that we are your kids. Lord, help us as we leave this place today to know that you are our loving Heavenly Father. Go with us today and help us to get into your word, to meditate on your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome week.